put my foot down. The bridge isn't where I, where it was. It lurches to one side, I, side either because it was wrecked, or it was weakened or pushed. Pamil and I managed to keep our ground, as it does the guy. As does the guy. He presses on with even, presses on with even bothering to see if we're able to follow. The mill grows and grows in frustration as we push to keep up with the guide's pace. As our storm of feet thunder across the boards, a sliver, a silver sliver begins to rise into view just above the edge of the water. It's the island. Oh, I see the light. The island, I squint and suddenly make out the craggy forms of land and earth I see it we're almost there safety at long last and safety at long last in sight new energy surges through me we push ourselves faster longing to put these god forsaken bridges behind our backs all at once the bridge ends and our entire group reaches ashore earth solid earth a heaven from the water I catch my breath while still moving even further away from the dark shoreline. I can't believe we actually made it. Even more difficult is the idea that we're only halfway done. When night falls once more, we have to do it all again. A heavy arm falls across my shoulders and I straighten to see Bamil smiling wearily at me. Good work out there. Oh boy. It's not the usual combination of a job well done. There's sadness, perhaps even sympathy, in the sentence. It ends flatly. Usually, Bamil's comfort and good nature gives me at least the urge to smile, but right now, it feels like a hollow victory. Despite still having the comfort of one another, we are incapable of doing any true good. We were only able to save ourselves. A quiet... A quiet, a quiet moment passes between us. Then the guide is there. He moves so smoothly that his steps on the soft sand are nearly silent and his dusky clothes blend with the thinning of the night. The sun will rise soon. The fire on the bridge is the only reason this island isn't overrun with prowlers right now. However, they could still pose a threat. Bamil levels an empty look towards the guide. Is there something we should do? Come. The guide takes us to an area a bit further inland, but not too far from the water. Trees particularly ob obscure our location. There's enough room to watch the coast in case prowlers start to emerge from the water. Essentially it's a place where an ambush would be hard. If any of you see anything at all, speak up. We don't want them to sneak up on us. <laughs> Almost automatically each member of the group turns to a different direction. As the sky continues to fade from pale purple to a muted blue, the water stays silent. For the first time, nothing happens. It's a miracle. Suddenly, my chest is lighter and the air is fresher. The first pricks of light appear over the horizon, stinging my eyes after such a long journey through the darkness. A sound catches my attention and I move my focus towards it towards this direction the guide is opening the latch on his lantern again he gently almost respectfully blows out the light we no longer have to worry about the nixie it is over for today yeah 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 i'm almost unable to keep tears of, of relief from pouring out of those wood out of those words we made it through the night we survived no one feels the need to speak we look at each other, an understanding passing between us. 
then we find our then we find our own space as comfortable as we can get and lie down for the rest we weren't sure we would ever come my eyes slowly blink open and readjust to the brightness what little there is the sun is obscured by a thick layer of fog making it possible to estimate the time of day I prop open my elbows and push myself up the ground is hard and rocky but that isn't the only reason I'm eager to get on my feet I check my surroundings the harsh cragging earth of the island is interlaced with twisting vines and gnarled branches beside me Bamil is still fast asleep the guide however is nowhere to be seen <clears throat> I realize that I don't recall seeing him lay down with everyone it's likely he left us hours ago there's a creeping silence in the air there's creepy silence in here in here I can't help but shudder at the hollow aching feeling inside me it refuses to relent I shift my weight back and forth unsure of what to do with myself memories of last night's harrowing journey flicker through my mind Bellamy walks, wakes suddenly, raising with alarm. <clears throat> my mouth opens and shuts. After a moment, fumbling, fumbling, a word finally Hello. escapes. The mill gives me a gentle smile and makes his way over to me. Morning. A pocket of quiet, of quiet descends. Over us, the mill sighs. The atmosphere is weighing on him already. We should eat something soon yes <clears throat> a distant rustling of leaves around catches my attention the guide appears emerging from the thicket the melee glares at at him as he makes his way over the nixie will not tread on land in daylight however being near the shoreline is still dangerous if you leave the center of the island, remain cautious. Before the sun sets, I will be in this area. It would be wise to meet me here before nightfall. Why do you do this? I sharply turn towards Bellamy, and as he snarls and confronts the guide. If you had just let him follow behind us, if you had been there before, none of this would have happened. <laughs> <clears throat> they didn't have to die. The guy looks away, seemingly unaffected. If all you're going to do is leave everyone to be lost, then why bother guiding us at all? Despite Bellamy's severe words, the guy apparently considers his piece here finished. He turns toward the forested area from which he came. Wait. <clears throat> but Millie calls out to the guy reaching towards him before he can make contact I quickly pr place my hand on his shoulder he lowers his arm to his side though I can still feel wrath emanating from him we stay this way until the guy disappears from view but Millie begins to kick at the ground spraying tiny pieces of gravel about Bamele, I know you're angry but regardless of our feelings we need the guide if he leaves us we'll all die and we've done so well with him <clears throat> I give him a cold glance we won't be we won't even know which bridge to take without the guide but Mele knows that this needs to stop there are people counting on us to make it back we can't afford to lose our way the anger etched into his expression fades into sadness. I can't stay here right now. Quietly I speak. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, 
Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Uh, let's go with Bimele. I speak too softly for B Bimele to hear. Lingering for a moment, I start following the trail Bimele took. Doesn't take him long to notice I'm there, and he slows his pace so I can easily catch up. We fall into step for a short while, neither of us speaking. Eventually, we come to a thick and stand of trees and wordlessly weavy our way through the branches. Once we're hidden by the foliage, <clears throat> Bimele leans against a, tr a tree trunk, head hung low. Negativity radiates off him, but I don't know what I should say. Fortunately, he breaks the silence. I apologize for back there. I nod firmly. His reply isn't unexpected for as long as I've known, known Bellamy. He has a tendency to let his temper flare, then regret it later after processing his thoughts. I know that dealing with these sorts of situations calmly is part of the job. I can, sure, I can feel some. Oh no. Oh! Oh? I know that dealing with the, these sorts of situations calmly is part of the job, but I cannot tell myself everything is fine or that none of that matters. Okay. Sure, I can blame. Sure, I can feel something without it being anger, but I have not. But I have not figured out that either. Rather than speak, I try to listen as support, supportively as I can while. Familia continues to argue with himself. He sighs while pensively rubbing the bridge of his nose. Am I simply being foolish? Would it really have been so harmful to try and help someone else instead of focusing solely on oneself? It looks to me like we're telling ourselves these lines to avoid responsibility. I don't know. It's possible you helping would have worked better. It's also possible it would have been worse. Mill stares across the empty waters of Sinos. I want it to be clear that I have not forgotten that those people across this lake are depending upon us. Not for a moment. But would they want us to be so focused on them that we should turn a blind eye to others right in front of us? Even if they would, does that matter? We are more than weapons. We are people. Do we have to cast that aside? Turn away from our fellow humans? Just to achieve a so-called greater good? Maybe. That that all depends. I'm not entirely sure. It's shit. not as though this village is a haven of saints. They are only as worthwhile as we are, and these people on the bridges with us, aren't they? I don't know. I can feel the weight of his words settle upon me. I have had similar thoughts, and I have questioned what what the correct choice is. But I'm like Billy. I have always been silent. I clench my fist tights to try to stop from saying something rash. Bimele closes his eyes tight and rubs his face again. It's clear this hasn't been enough to give him much peace. Eventually his eyes reopen and look different and look directly into mine. What do you think about all this, Kika? Please, be honest with me. I want to hear it. I want to have your baby. Suddenly my eyes are hot. My vision blurs slightly from tears. I desperately am trying to hold back. I really don't know. That is the truth. My words are soft. Whether he heard it or not, the look on my face is enough to garner attention. His eyebrows shoot up in surprise. He walks over to me slowly, concerned. Kika, what is troubling you? I don't have the answers to what you are wondering. Who are we meant to protect? Everyone we can? Whoever we're told to serve and no one else? Just ourselves? 
Should we only try to protect others when the risk is minimal? I have no idea what the right option is. Vermilia's confusion only mounts with my words. I am sorry for disappointing you. No! You haven't disappointed me in any way. I never should have expected someone else to give me answers to those kinds of questions. No. It is only... I did not think that... Yeah, you didn't think. You get angry and go, He does not finish his thought, but I know what he meant to say. You did not think I was concerned with these issues? Yep. He smiles awkwardly, o awkwardly over being caught. Yes. You never seem to be bothered by anything we experienced before now. Yeah, well, some people have a better way of hiding their emotions than most. With his words, my carefully held resolve crumbles. It is that my cheeks are wet with hot fluid cooling in the chilly, in the chill air as it slips down my face. Oh, race care. I've always been afraid and confused, but I have kept up a... I stopped and gasped for air, my throat almost as tight as when we were running on the bridges. A farce of strength in order to get by. I breathed deeply with relief, terrified and light-headed from my conf confession. But Melia's voice is as delicate as the flower's petals. I had no idea. How could I not have noticed? Because I did whatever I could to make sure no one did. I have never wished to appear weak in front of others. But the truth is, I barely get through each day. I often feel overwhelmed with sadness at all that we have experienced. The melee gently places his hand on my shoulders as I try not to sob wildly. Kinga, I truly apologize for all the thoughtless things I have said to you. I shake my head sniffling. There is no need for you to apologize. He smiles, the warmth almost, almost enough to make me forget the damp. I beg to differ. I have failed to treat you right. Oh? I didn't know we were lovers. You have always been respectful. Really? A person needs more than respect from their comrades. They also need support. I have never given you that kind of consideration because I believed someone like you did not need it. Oh yeah? The same could be said for me. Nonsense. You have listened to my rambling on more occasions than I can remember. Though I admit my memories may not be there due to being drunk many of those times. Familiar laughs at himself while glancing in my direction to encourage me to do the same. His comforting words make me smile and I feel my tears finally cease to fall. And I will continue to support you, still it's not necessary. He grins wider than he has since we began this horribly, horrible journey. You have my thanks. And do you have mine? Abruptly, his expression becomes serious once more. I will come to answer these questions someday. But no matter what I decide, I will still put trust in your judgment. I fear I may not live up to the belief he seems to have in me, but I nod firmly. He returns my nod. Perhaps we should go check how everything is on the island. That sounds like an excellent idea. And I will accompany you, of course. Glad to hear it. Together we walk back towards the interior of the island. Both our moods lift as we stay side by side. Mill and I had head through the wooded part of the island. There isn't anything that could be called a path, but we managed to pick our way through the bush quite well. Through the inner stand of trees, we briefly catch the sight of the guide standing on one of the beaches. He seems fine, but even though I'm sure he turned his head down, turned his head toward me, he makes no show of acknowledging us. It takes less than takes less time than I would have hoped for us to see all that there is on the isolated place now we will have now we will have spent time simply waiting 
a far more unpleasant task. When we seat ourselves underneath the large tree at the meeting point, there is no sign of the sun setting, and I find myself becoming increasingly restless. I release a breath, but I have yet to shake the dark and throbbing thoughts coursing through my mind. A pat on my back grants me a moment's reprieve. I truly, it truly is just the two of us. Deep sorrow stirs inside of me at that thought. However, having Bellamy here with me gives me slight comfort. I lean against his shoulder and he doesn't move to stop me. We sit together quietly as we wait for the sun to descend from the sky. The sky turns orange as sunset comes upon us. As the color seems to drain from the world, being consumed by the fog, the guide makes his appearance. It's almost time. I nod and feel myself grow tense. We truly are about to return to the to those bridges. All of us wait in a comfortable silence until night falls. Night settles like a shroud over the, the land, every inch of the world now covered in un, unrelentless unre, <laughs> darkness. Suddenly there is a gurgling. The water parts as the bridges of Sinodos rise, powered by some natural by some unnatural force cre creaking like they might fall apart. I feel unexpectedly pounding like a hammer in the back of my head, beating faster and heavier than my own heart. I clench my teeth to stop it from churning my stomach. We must go now. Yes, Gandalf. The guy doesn't wait for any replies, briskly sta staring in the direction of the shore. Vanilla and I match his pace. I can feel the air weighing on us. Sensation that slows our stop, our steps. Despite being rested, something hovers in my mind. The mirrored memory of the beginning of last night's journey. One day ago feels like a lifetime's past. The thick, icky water sloshes reluctantly off the boards, bleeding back into the lake until finally it stills. A shudder crawls over my body as I place my foot on the boards, but I quickly shake it off. I have no other option. We have to go through this again. All tense as day old corpses, we walk the bridges in silence. The only sound that accommodates us in the thick lapping of the water at the bridge. But Mele stays close by my side, with our sour expression on with a sour expression on his face. He evidently has little interest in making his disgust. He mummers something beneath his breath, but is inaudible. I decide not to ask about it. It wasn't meant for me to hear. It feels as though barely any time has passed. When it is explained that half the night has crept by, we encountered a few sunken bridges which forced us to reroute while other paths were rotten enough to make us stagger our steps. However, the biggest threat of all is eerily absent, the prowlers. I haven't seen more than shadowy glimpses of them down other paths, and even those may have simply been tricks of the fog, I feel I may be even more on edge tonight than last. Than the last. Judging by Bell Bellamy's tensions, he isn't set at ease by their lack of presence either. Why? I whisper the question softly, almost silently, as I scan left and right across the impossibly empty bridges for any sign of movement. I pound whether they're still weary from the consuming blaze that lit up the night yesterday, or if there are less dragging themselves across the bridges 
than usual because many have already gotten what they wanted. My skin crawls with the touch of icy fingers at the thought and I can't control the sharp shiver that travels down my spine. But Millie catches my concern and he brings himself closer to my ear. This isn't right. It shouldn't be nearly this easy to cross. Not after what we went through the other night. Yeah, no, I understand. Would they be planning something? Oh, boy. <laughs> but Melly lightly shakes his head. He speaks with suspicion in his voice as he peers at the guy ahead. I don't know. Maybe. As time passes, we continue to see nothing but more bridges and fog. Beside me, Bellamy is becoming more and more agitated. The longer we go without di disruption. I can read Bellamy well enough to know that his anger is still directed at the guide rather than the bridges themselves. It was my hope that he would be able to contain his feelings toward our lead until we put this maze behind us. But that is becoming unlikely. I resolve to step in before he grows too heated and there is yet another ha hazardous argument. Your concentration is clouded, Bamele. What is troubling you? Surely you're already aware. It's him. Bamele. Bamele. Glower. Glowers hatefully at the guide. I purse my lips for a moment before continuing. Resane. I do know that. However, you need to stop allowing that to consume you. Or else you could get hurt. Or even... Bamele releases, releases an exasperated sigh while crossly folding his arms. That is impossible. I can't stop myself from thinking about it. Everything makes so much sense now. What, what do you mean by that? Recall yesterday. I asked him why he would lead others at all if he was heartlessly going to leave them behind. What if this is the reason? Before, we could scarcely escape these monsters, and now I can't even hear a whisper of one. What if they're already satisfied with what they've taken? Maybe. My eyes wider and I stifle a gasp. The, situa the situation I had giving both of us reason to think on that, pal on that possibility is absolutely unsettling, but his conclusion is even worse still. The notion of the guide allowing others to die unnecessarily on purpose to make it less dangerous for the remaining few, that is that is not something I, I was prepared for. Even back when we started, the first time we met the guide, he mentioned that at least one of us would die before the journey was finished. Didn't that exchange seem strange to you? He said it as though it was a price to pay for coming with him. The guide is free to do as he pleases. He can and will threaten to leave the entire group behind at so much as a hint of resistance. Nothing is stopping him. He knew this was going to happen. He had to know. I, I believe him. Take a few moments to breathe despite the danger. I only barely resist shutting my eyes against the world. We need to make it to the other side. We must keep moving forward and survive. The guide is our only way across. My usual reply for Bellamy's worries does not make an impression. His eyes are not swayed. He continues to stare into me. I am saying he cannot be trusted with our lives at this very moment. I need an answer to that, Kika. What do you really think? Oh boy. Not another... Uh, okay. Alrighty. If we're gonna do this, we might as well do it right, right? Right. Alrighty. We can discuss this at the mm. end. Coming to any decision on the matter is impossible right now. There's too much danger and too many unknowns to account for for to reach any sort of conclusion. I have no choice but to shut the conversation down. I can only hope Bellamy will take it seriously. When everything is through, then we may talk about it. End of discussion. I don't know, we'll talk about it later, homie. Bellamy doesn't battle me further on the issue. His face no longer retains any anger, only sorrow. 
he returns his gaze straight ahead. Our progress continues steadily and we still encounter no significant difficulties. How much longer until we reach the other side? We have traveled quite a ways. Familia's quiet, quiet breaking question doesn't sound particularly enthused. It should only be another couple of hours. Huh. Familia is unconvinced. It is only, it is not only I who notices. The guide suddenly stops. Eerily, he turns his head to the side and looks back at is us. Is there a problem with that? Hmm. Is there? We progress through the bridges as much at, at a much quicker clip. This time, the mill's question was not idle curiosity. He was confirming that the fact for himself, I should have known. The guy looks to be slightly irritated over the attitude the mill has taken. If you have something to say, you should say it. Unless you're afraid that I'm going to leave you behind. His statement lands heavily on us. Did he listen to our conversation? There were no sounds to cover our voices. However, I had assumed we were far enough away from the guy to keep our words to ourselves. He stares with such an icy expression I nearly freeze in place. Familia, on the other hand, heats up and grows more hostile. He leaves my side to rush into the flickering to the guide's flickering Don't. light. This is going to this is going much too far. I urge him to come back. He ignores me and takes a stand facing the guide. Am I right? Are you going to leave us behind after what I've done? The guide isn't bothered at all by Bellamy's in, entering his space. He gives a level answer. No. Well, that's grand. In that case, I'd like to know if I'm on the right track about something else. Are the monsters missing because they've already eaten? Or is there some other reason why they've all mysteriously vanished? The guide pauses for a moment, his eyes close, and he becomes completely still. It's possible. <laughs> Bamilla glares at the guide over the adamant, adamant 